Oh, yes, the ultimate comfort food. Hey, everybody, it's me, Hetty. Let's make some chicken pot pie. I have made this. This was four chicken breasts that I made. I will put a link below. I made from my chicken on the stovetop recipe. Very short, sweet, simple. And so there's the chicken. I've already let it cool. I've already put it into bite-sized pieces. Okay, moving on from that. Here, I'll just show you, you know, bite-sized pieces. Not too big, not too small. Okay, I'm doing this one-handed. Uh, all this is, this is a 12-ounce package of uh, just bite-sized green beans. And I have a 12-ounce package of peas and carrots. I may add one more peas and carrots. I'll have to just see. I've got about two cups of mushrooms in here. And you can't see, but you can see these bite-sized pieces. Uh, I cut up four medium, I didn't have great big ones, four medium potatoes, and I made them into bite size. You know, like you would find where? In a chicken pot pie. <laughs> okay, and moving on. I strained out my chicken broth from the breast. Now, because I didn't have any skin, they were skinless, I did go in and add a little soup base to taste, okay? So you can do that as well. I had celery in there. You know the same old instructions. I had poultry seasoning, that kind of stuff, uh, and a little salt and pepper. Not a whole lot of salt because I wanted to taste it after I made the broth, and it's really good. All right, so there's the liquid I'll need for the next situation, and I'm going to show you that now. I'm only going to cook this off for about, I don't know, three minutes. Uh, just making a basic roux. Of course, I'm not trying to go dark. I'm trying to leave it blonde because this is, you know, for your chicken dish. Okay, I'll bring you back. Also, I'm sorry, I may not have hit record when I, all I did was pour the flour into the butter. Okay, now I'm going to incorporate it with my handy dandy ball whisk. I love this thing. And you can love it too. Whoops, making a mess, aren't I? Because I'm looking through the camera. Okay, you get the idea. I'm going to mix the flour up really well and just cook it off for a few minutes, okay? I'm going to show you those onions in a second. Okay, these are my onions that I just strained out from the broth right there. And they're so tender, that's just little tiny pieces of chicken. That's all that is because I didn't have any skin or anything. And I'm just going to go through. You get the idea. I'm going to finish mashing these up pretty good. And then I'm going to add them into the roux when it's time. And speaking of roux, let's check in on that. Okay, wow, sorry about that. I'm getting teed off. I'm getting a spam caller three times in a row. I know it's a spam caller because it's very similar to my number, and they're always spam callers. I've been dealing with that for years. I'm getting tired of it. So I stopped and blocked it so it wouldn't happen again while I was recording. So if, you're, if there's any weird jumps around, that's why I kept getting these phone calls. Believe me, it's nobody I know. All right. Okay, so we're still cooking this down. I may add another tablespoon to this. Uh, I want it to be nice and thick. Okay, I'll bring you back. Okay, I didn't end up adding any more flour. It's okay, it's cooking down good. All right, there's the onions. I mashed them up really nice. That looks weird on the video, but remember that cooked inside of a uh, stock pot. So I'm stirring these in. A lot of people just saute onions in there, but I flavored my chicken while I waste that onion, okay? So now, as you can see, this is perfect. And what I'm going to start doing is, I'm, oh, I'm making a mess. I'm going to start ladling in chicken broth. So, hold on a minute. Okay, I'm going to start ladling in the broth. I'm going to ladle in about three ladles. And then I'll stir. I'm not going to... I'm just showing you what to do. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch this whole thing. Because I'm looking through a lens of a camera, so let me keep get going, and I'll bring you back and update you. I want to, uh, now you think this is going to be lumpy, but it's not. Believe me, just keep stirring it down with a whisk. And those lumps will go away. Now, remember, I'm making a double recipe, so it seems like I've got a lot. But I just want to tell you, if you wanted to stop here after I get this incorporated, this is a good, you just add salt and pepper. Well, to taste, I've already got salt in it, so you probably just need pepper. And this would be a beautiful, just chicken gravy or light gravy for mashed potatoes or anything like that. But we're making something else with it. So, as you know, you know, the title tells you. I've been cooking a lot the last few days, and yes, 
I, I can make a mess when I cook. All right. I'm going to keep going. I'll bring you back when it's ready to add the vegetables in. I told you already the amounts of the vegetables, and of course they'll be down below if I can figure out where to point. <laughs> okay, folks, I'm showing y'all now. I'm cheating today. I'm using refrigerated pie dough. I do quite a bit when I don't feel well. If you've been watching for a long time, y'all know I make an excellent pie crust. Sometimes I'm not up to it, and today is one of those days. So I do keep these on hand. All right, so I'm just taking them out so I can sit out about 10 minutes. Uh, anyway, remember I'm making double this recipe. You just need two, top and a bottom. All right, uh, I will put a link below to my excellent, excellent pie crust. I need to remake that video, I guess, before the holidays. Anyway, I will do that again, I promise y'all. But today, I'm cheating, folks. Remember what I said about picking your battles? You know, y'all know my health is up and down. This one of those days. Okay, I'll bring you back for the next step. Okay, I just finished my gravy. It looks beautiful. It's not too loose, not too thick. If it's too thick, just thin it down with a little bit of milk or a little bit of water. Always taste this before you go to the next step. If this part doesn't taste right, your pie won't taste right, okay? So, moving on, I'm going to have to move some stuff around because everything's so hot. And then I'll show you how to put it all together. Okay, the idea here is I'm going to have to pour this gravy over these vegetables. Remember, I told you the amounts already. I did boil the potatoes off for about five or six minutes. You don't want to go too longer than that. The smaller you cut them, the less time. I probably didn't go quite five minutes because you don't want them to fall apart in your pie. And this is a part you're actually going to fold in. And I'll try to get my tripod uh, hooked up so you can see me do that. Or I'll just try to move to the other table. Let me see. Give me a second. I'll bring you right back. Okay, this is still awkward, but I think I can get what I need to get done. Again, here's my gravy. This pan is so hot. I think what I'm going to do, it's not hot now. It's been sitting here a minute, but it's still hot. I don't know if the camera's picking that steam up. These are my vegetables. These are my potatoes. My package of carrots and peas. And we like green beans in ours. Also, the chicken. All right. So, what I'm going to do is just put this in. Oop, making a mess. Okay. Got it. Almost got it all out. So, I'm just going to get these out. And actually, I have two. Remember, I'm doubling my recipe. So, I've got two each of my green beans and my carrots and peas. Okay. And that's why, of course, I'm using four chicken breasts. Now, look, you're not going to stir this to death. You don't want to break these potatoes down. So you're just going to, this pan's hotter, I'd be doing a quarter turn, but I'm just kind of going then, coming up through the middle. You're going to just fold the vegetables into the gravy, all right? And there's really no reason not to go ahead and add the chicken as well. So let's do that. That way when I stir it down, it's ready to roll. Then we'll put the pie dough out and all that good stuff. Okay. I'm going to fold this in. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me fold chicken into gravy, okay? So let me get this done. I'll bring you right back. Okay. Sorry, folks, if you can hear my washer. It's on the rinse cycle, so I apologize for that. Real kitchen, real life. That's my laundry room off of my kitchen, and I didn't shut the door. So, you know, I'm having one of those days. It's been pretty rough. Got a lot of rain moving through, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole and talk to you about it. It's just been rough the last couple of days. All right. As you can see, I've thoroughly, thoroughly mixed this in. I folded it. Do not stir vigorously. You will mess up your potatoes and you will further shred your chicken, which I try to keep in bite-sized pieces as best I can. All right, so kind of roll out that pie dough. So let me uh, move the dirty bowls out of the way, move this to the right, and then I'll show you how to assemble it. Oh, preheat your oven at 350. Wow, I actually remembered to say it before it was time. 350, 350 folks. I want to make mention here. Now, I want to show you my trick when I use refrigerated pie dough. Especially for this pie, you need it to come up over the edge. And, you know, these are just inexpensive 
refrigerated patios, okay? So when I need it to come up a little more, I put it in my pan, my pie plate, and I'm talking don't go over four or five seconds at a time. You just want the pie dough to be just pliable enough, and I've done this. Anyway, so here's what you're wanting to accomplish. You need this to come up all the way to the sides. All I'm doing is pressing up, pressing up, pressing up, especially where I was a little bit off center on this side. Okay, so anyway, you need it to come up and over because when I put, I'm not ready to yet, but when I put this, to make these workable, I always uh, throw them in the microwave for about five seconds, even before I unroll them, okay? So you'll see this in a minute. Right now, I'm just gonna place this over here. And so the next step, and this is kind of awkward, I'm doing this around a tripod. I give it, now, and I just come in. You're just gonna fill it up. Okay, this is heavy, so when I get it filled up, I'll show you next step. Okay, now I filled this up. I didn't overly fill it, but don't not fill it up, okay? So then you come over, just rack, uh, you know, run your ladle over, and just for, since I'm showing y'all, I took just a little bit out. This is the perfect amount right here. Now I have my top dough. I'm rolling it out just carefully, and I'm going to lay this over here so I can explain to you next, okay? So you, you see we've got this here. So what I do is I just kind of pull it up away from the side, and I tuck under. A lot of people roll over. Since I did this, didn't, if this would have been a homemade pie crust, I would have had a lot of extra crust left over. But anyway, I'm rolling it. And I'm even going to crimp it with a fork just to make sure it is uh, completely sealed. If you don't seal this, it will leak all over the place. And it's probably smart to put a cookie sheet under it anyway. Anyway, let me finish tucking and rolling. And then, uh, and again, look, I'm just turning it, making sure, look, here's the bottom. Here's my top. I'm just rolling it down with my fingers. Then tucking it like that. That's all I'm doing. Roll, roll. I want to be sure you understood that. And this, when I'm done, will be sealed. Okay? I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay. Now, I want to... Uh, I had never used this brand. It could turn out amazing, but I got what they had at the store. Okay? So, anyway, and that was uh, Mush, my kitty cat, sneezing. Uh, and no, he's not anywhere near the food. He's actually over by his food bowl in the laundry room. Okay, look, I don't normally do it like this. And look, if you've got the time, whatever you do, do make the homemade crust. You know, you can keep it in the freezer and pull it out before you're ready to use it. But anyway, I'm making do with this, and I'm not as happy with it because I usually like to roll over. But it's happened more than once that I have to roll under to make it seal. And all I'm doing is I'm pressing up against the edge of this pie plate. And if this is just for your family, you're not trying to be magazine of the month, okay? Sometimes my stuff's pretty and sometimes it's tasty, but it's not going to win a blue ribbon for a picture anyway. Okay, so there you go. There's nothing wrong with this. More than edible. But for this kind of pie, you definitely going to come in. I always just come in like this across, you know, you want it to be pretty, like this, like this, and then I always make like two little, it needs to be able to let out that steam as it's cooking, and, uh, and make sure you've got this, you don't want this sealing back up, so just kind of wiggle your knife, that's what I do, I just kind of wiggle, wiggle like that, and wiggle, all right, this is going to go in anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour, I will let you know how my time ran. And I'm going to do this one as well, and I'll show you that before I put them in, okay? Because naturally they're going at the same time. And that's it, folks. Look, Marie Calder doesn't have anything off my chicken pot pie, and I am telling you that with the utmost confidence. I'm not being arrogant. I am just telling you, this is good. If you like chicken pot pies, you know, and I'll tell you something else. You know, on Amazon, you can buy the little... Uh, 10 plates that they make 
the pies in. I think you can get that size uh, microwavable nowadays. So you could, you know, if you felt like getting a saucer out and cutting your dough, or if you're making pie dough, then you could just cut it out, you know. Uh, again, I'll have all the links. You definitely want to use that pie dough. If I had time and I felt good today, I would do it. But this is going to be a yummy supper, and we're going to have pan-roasted uh, asparagus tips with it tonight. Anyway, okay, and of course, this is in the wintertime. You know, we'll just throw that in a bowl and eat it by itself. I mean, you don't have to have something the whole time. But tonight, I had the asparagus tips I needed to use up, so I cleaned them, and they're going in as these bake. Okay, I'll bring you back when this one's done before we go in the oven. I also want to show you, and you know what? I honestly do not remember if I did this or the other one. Oh, well, if I didn't. Spiff ovens. Uh, I do go around. You want to prick the bottom of it. I don't think it matters, but I don't remember. I'm so tired. Okay, moving on. Also, want to point out something else real quick. As you can see, I've already filled this pie plate, so we're going to have two. That's plenty for us. I told you I was doubling it. Yes, I did double it. Guess what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to vacuum seal it, and I have enough in my freezer. Think about this. If I've got refrigerated pie dough, to make two pies, you need four uh, pie doughs. You know, four of these. Two come in a box. Anyway, if I've got this frozen ready to go, I can basically cut a little slit in it for steam to, uh, or even better, the night before, just shove it in your fridge. It'll thaw, you come home from work, you got two pies in less than an hour. How can you beat that? How can you beat that? You can't beat that. So when I meant I was doubling it, I'm doubling it for the filling. I'm not making four uh, chicken pot pies. We don't need that. So anyway, okay, I wanted to clarify that. Uh, you get the idea? This isn't gonna win a blue ribbon for looks, but it would, it would for taste. Anyway, uh, the main thing is you want to make sure this is sealed. Inevitably, you're going to have, every once in a while, it's going to come through. It's just going to bubble. So put these over a cookie sheet, like I said, and, you know, no sweat. You're cooking for your family. You're not, you know, it's not a contest with this. It's great, amazing flavor. And if I had time, and, and I will address this in a future video, but anyway, I wanted to tell you, it's no big deal if it's like, you know, if it separates over here and it kind of spills over a little bit. It's not going to be bad. And your family is going to love it. Trust me on this. Okay? I've been making this, shoot, 35 years. I have never had any I had to throw out. I'll put it like that. Okay? And the filling, like I explained to you, uh, you could just triple Ziploc bag it. Just roll your air out like I've told y'all. And... Uh, I wouldn't store it for months and months and months. I don't do that. Y'all know I've had that discussion with y'all. But, you know, in a month you want to make some more. Or winter's coming up. You know, it'd be ready to go. And chicken pie pie is an excellent winter meal. Of course, we hadn't had it. And I had that chicken. And I said, this is what we're having today. So, everybody said, yeah. So, okay. In the oven they go. When they're done, I'll bring you back. 350. And I'll tell you how long mine took. Okay. I'll see you then. Okay. Here they are. And I don't know what I was thinking about. I am so tired. I realized after I recorded that part, and I'll probably put some text just to verify everything. But uh, I left mine in about 35 minutes. Not 40 minutes, not an hour. Okay? So I have also been letting it rest for about 10 minutes. Maybe 12, something like that. Let's see if I can get you some. Make you a plate. Except, I don't know where my pie server is. I don't know, so this might not come out pretty. But it did. Mm, oh, no, it didn't. Oh, well, this will be mine. Oh, man, look at that bottom crust. <gasps> Y'all, I can't wait to get in this. I'll make you a prettier uh, picture for the photo. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to, to dig into this. I can tell everything is so tender. Uh, I can just cut, oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Oh, that mushroom. Oh man, okay. So there's our supper. I've got some uh, oven roasted Parmesan asparagus tips. 
And you know, I don't know if I've done that in a video before. I've, I've done pan roasted garlic asparagus. I know, but I don't remember if I have or not. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if I haven't. And uh, we can I can show you that too. Pamela loves them just as well. Okay, I know this was a quickie, sloppily thrown together. I apologize for that. The recipe is good. Trust me on it. Might not be ultra smooth like a swank production, but believe me, the content's there. Okay, I will see y'all next time. Bye. P.S. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. This was so good, y'all.